Phillies got a first-hand look this weekend. Back-to-back -back shutout started by Jordan Zimmerman and Steven Strasburg. Finished by the bullpen yesterday. Tanner Roar goes for his fifth straight win tonight. It's a matchup of two first-place teams. Unusual scenario here in town, Orioles Nats. We have some split loyalties. In fact, it appears we have some split personalities walking into the ballpark. O's shirts, Nats caps, and that's okay. They're both first place teams. Braves don't play tonight. They face Felix Hernandez in Seattle tomorrow. The Orioles go to Toronto after this game. So we've got some interesting things going on with these two clubs. They are not also Rans in their division anymore. Bob an FP makeup of a game back almost a month ago. Tanner Roark, and this is the first time the Orioles, whether they know how to say his name or not, <laughs> have ever seen him. Yeah, nobody knows how to say Tanner Roark's name around the ballpark. That's how under the radar he is in Major League Baseball. Well, he's not under the radar in Washington, D.C., in the nation's capital. When you look at his last four starts, seven inning efforts, and he's given up just one run, and that stars in their last ten games, a 1-7-6 ERA, and they've gone seven innings in nine of their last 10 games. So Tanner Roark has been the man. All of baseball is going to hear about him soon, but he has been one of the Nats aces this year. And pick an ace, any ace, they're all pitching well right now. Yeah, how about the consistency of those numbers capped off by his last time out at Miami? Got the Nats a badly needed win on Wednesday. Don't forget, they had dropped the first two games of that series. Kevin Gosman, the Orioles think he'll be a star. We'll have more on him in a moment. They're kind of interesting. They've turned into a pitching team now. Their hitters a little bit cold. Yeah, their team's hitting 202 since the All-Star break as a ball club. Last time we saw the Orioles, a formidable lineup. They've kind of gone south right now, but they've been doing it with pitching. They're ranked third in the American League since the All-Star break, and Gosman's got a good fastball. It can go up to 99 miles an hour. A lot of orange, a lot of red in the ballpark tonight. Baltimore leads the all-time Battle of the Beltways rivalry, 28-21. to But since Nets Park opened in 08, it's 9-9. Nine nine. So a bit of a deciding game here tonight. Last time these two will see each other maybe until hmm, October. Bank for the achiever in you. 
by visitannapolis.org. Find it here. And by Navy Federal Credit Union. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. O's Nets. Baltimore winning two out of three this year so far. And the Nats trying to beat them for the first time in this ballpark. It's a gorgeous night for baseball and for a Monday. Man, this place is going to be full. It's going to be loud. Winds are calm. Humidity not bad. It's 86. Visit trainsearch.com. Find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train really hard. Orioles are hitting 256. They've scored the same number of runs this year as the Nats have. Manny Machado's been brilliant lately defensively. He's also seven for his last 11, and he's been ridiculous against the Nats at 15 of 28. Tanner Roark, first time he sees Baltimore and vice versa. Yeah, fastball 91 from Roark, slider 83, curveball 73, the changeup at 82, throw any pitch in any count. Home ERA for Tanner, 194 this year, a 5 and 4 record at Nats Park with the ERA. 6 and 2 on the road. First time the Orioles get a look at Mr. Roark. Mark Akis at 286. Fifth most hits in the American League with 131. And he's on a three game hitting streak, 6 for 11. First pitch, Roark misses away, and we're underway at 7.06. The 1 0. Perfect. We'll set the umpires for you in a moment. Gabe Morales, the junior member of this crew, Paul Nart, first base, crew chief Larry Vanover at second, and Vic Carapazza at third. Marcakis, a tapper, and Roark bounces off the mound to make it an easy out. He's already making me look good. I tell the Orioles broadcasters he feels his possession well. Let's check out the defense or position for the Nats today. Harper, Spanworth, your outfield, Desmond Rendon, left side, Cabrera LaRoche, right side, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. I was just wondering about the umpiring crew. Will we see them here tomorrow, or are they just here for one game? I guess we'll find out then. I might lose sleep over that. Manny Machado. If that keeps you up, you've got problems <laughs> I can't help you with. Well, you already know that's the case. 276 on the season. And Roark will spin him out of there with a fastball just off his hip. Well, we mentioned the Orioles' struggles offensively out of the All-Star rank. They're ranked 15th in the American League with a 202 average, but not this guy. He's hitting 300 since the break, 15 for 50. Probably been the most consistent hitter for the O's post All Star break. Nick Markakis as well, but Manny Machado has been locked in. You know, the last time these two teams got together, at least the first time this year, the Orioles had scored 26 runs more on the season than the Nats. As I said a moment ago, they're dead even. Anthony Rendon at third base. He pulled LaRoche into foul ground. Adam able to do it two outs and there's one guy I think about when these teams get together and he can't play it's got to be killing Ryan Zimmerman to watch his longtime buddy Nick Markakis lead off and then Ryan's not going to have any at bats against the Orioles at least tonight so hang in there buddy we're with you all the way and we well, can't wait to get Ryan Zimmerman back there's a chance he could have some at bats against the Orioles I left that open ended Just might be a little colder out that's all, all right, that's why I said this time a lot of people talking about that today and why not Two first place teams going head to head. You gotta love that. Hey, it's better than they used to talk about who's gonna get the first draft pick. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the number three guy, and really carrying the Orioles lately, despite the fact he's 0 for 13, is Adam Jones. They've won a lot of extra inning games lately, home and road. He's always the guy who seems to get the big hit for them. Low and inside. How about the work rate of Tanner Roark so far? He's he's playing a pretty brisk game of catch. With Wilson Ramos and Adam Jones just had to step out. Great breaking ball. Adam Jones post All Star break 185 average. And you see Tanner Roark right here going with that little slider at 83 miles an hour. 
And Carp, when you say guys work fast, and we talk about it all the time, it, it screams one thing to me, and that's confidence. Yeah. You have to be confident on that mound to get it and go. If you're not, you take a long time between pitches. One and two, and Jones around very late. Guys that are thinking, worrying about their mechanics. What should I throw here? Does this pitch work? That that's what takes time. And Doug Fisher, same way. Ultimate confidence to throw any pitch in any count. Let's go. Let's do this. Two two pitch. Well hit to left and Bryce Harper right there. Couple of grounders, a line drive. One of the hottest hitters in baseball, Denard Span, now at the top of the hit list. Go inside the numbers with STG before we show you the lineup. National League Player of the Month, July last year, July this year. Jason Worth, 337, 24 batted in. He scored 17 runs, 11 doubles, 14 walks. All the other numbers add up to a fantastic month. He's the only Nats position player ever to be Player of the Month, and he's done it twice. July and Worth, he changes his first name. Nice. Rendon. 78 runs leads all of the major leagues. 45 extra base hits, fifth. Denard Spans come alive. Mention him at the top of the hit list. He's now seventh in the National League in hits with 122. All the big guns are in there tonight. And they'll take on Kevin Gosman, who faced the Nats last year, gave up three home runs, but he's one of their bright young stars on the pitching side. Yeah, fastball runs up there. 99 at times. He averages 95. He'll sit around 94, 95. Two strikes, he'll reach back up to that 99. Got two kinds of change ups to go with it a circle change at 85 and a split change at 83. He'll throw an occasional slider. Coming off a win against the Angels on July 30th, pitched seven innings, gave up three runs against the Halos, walked three, struck out two. So we talked about the offense for the Orioles post All-Star break. Their pitching is third in the American League with a 10 and 6 record, a 278 ERA. They've struck out 124 as a staff and walked just 41, a 235 average against. So they've been doing it with pitching. Club sitting 202 carp and they're 10 and 6 out of the break. How about that? And they're winning a lot of close games thanks to that pitching and their bullpen.
Gosman went only four innings, gave up seven runs on eight hits in that game. A year ago, May 28th, a long time ago for him and for both these ball clubs. And that was a 9 3 win in this ballpark a year ago, May. Three one to span. Fastball right in there. Denard span. We mentioned this over the weekend. His on base percentage now is over 350 at 352. He's hitting 338 at home. Only five home hitters in the National League have better averages in their own ballpark. Full count. Popped up. Left side, Manny Machado, foul ground. That's kind of hopefully just throw it to first so I could see his arm. Let's set the defense for the Orioles. Cruz Jones Marquecas, the outfield. Hardy Machado left side, Flaherty Davis right side, and Caleb Joseph behind the plate. Nick Marquecas, Adam Jones, they played in all 110 games for the Orioles this year. They're the only set of teammates to do that. Posting every single day, and that's impressive, and it's even more impressive because of the uniform they're in. There was some guy that used to play for him that did that a lot. Ripkin or something. Yeah, shortstop. Best known as the older brother of the second baseman. Well, our buddy next door made him a third baseman. <laughs> Mike Bordick? Yeah. <laughs> oh, one, two, Rendon. Way inside. Well, Anthony, an RBI hit his last time up yesterday. Drove in five against the Phillies in that series. As we mentioned, not a huge series in terms of numbers of hits, but boy, he made them count. Five hits, five RBIs. This one out to left center. Well hit, hanging up though. And Nelson Cruz will get there. He was playing way off the line. And that's how you stop balls in the gap in this ballpark. Player of the month, Jason Worth is next. Betting average just under 280. Eclipsed 60 RBIs this week. 18 of his last 30 hits for extra bases. Not a whole lot of action in the National League tonight. Mets lost at home to the Giants today 4-3. Everybody else in our division idle. Nats by three and a half over the Braves. And as mentioned, they go to Seattle, open a series tomorrow. They'll see some pitching there. Two and one to Worth. Well, the Orioles rank offensively Carp is 29th in Major League Baseball with that 202 average since the break. The Mets are 30th with a 200 average. So they're rolling into town tomorrow. Probably here already. And Worth with a big cut. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, this makeup scenario definitely worked in the favor of the Nats. Already home and home tomorrow. And the Orioles will be getting into Toronto sometime in the wee hours tomorrow morning. After this night game, 2 2. Worth hits it hard, and the shift that they were playing will cost the Orioles a base hit. Ryan Flaherty was way up the middle, and Worth hit it hard to his left. Well, the reason why Jason Worth was player of the month in July was because he was spraying the ball all over the ballpark. Wherever you pitched it, he hit it. And I've never seen a second baseman play him that much to pull. And Jason, with what would have been a routine ground ball to second base, gets the first hit of the night for the Nats. And there goes the no-hitter. Adam LaRoche had one of the homers last year against Gosman in that game. 
His only at bat, a three run shot. Tyler Moore and Roger Bernardino later in that game went back to back home runs. And then LaRoche hit another one that day in the eighth inning against left hander Troy Patton. Sitting on 13 here. And they're playing a shift on him. The shortstop, J.J. Hardy, up the middle. You remember I said the secret weapon for the Padres was Tommy Medica? He came through last night big time for the Nats. Had the game winner again against the Braves. That was a good game. He'll never buy dinner in Arlington, Virginia again. Huh? 2 0. Oh. Yeah, great series. Padres are playing good baseball. I saw on Twitter last night. Somebody wrote. It's the worst road trip. Since the Donner party for the Braves. I thought that was a little maybe too soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. On the hands of Adam LaRoche and he fouls it into the dugout. We do it every time the. NL AL get together and the Angels are at the Dodgers tonight, but the American League this year is 20 over 500 against the National League 115 and 95. So quit crying about no DH on the road. Come on. I don't think the National League's ever had a winning year in interleague baseball. And on an off speed 2 1 pitch, LaRoche has a real count. If they decide to go after him here, right hander Ian Desmond on deck. And LaRoche will drive it to right center. Worth making the turn against one of the best arms in the American League. Makes it easily. Nick Markakis, 10 assists. And the Nats are making some first inning noise. Well, you fall behind to a good fastball hitter. He knew he was going to get it, and I think he just missed the spot by a little bit. He wanted this to be way away, and it got a little bit too much play. You see Joseph kind of reaching across just a little bit, and LaRoche likes the ball down the zone. Drives it to right, and Jason Worth goes first to third with two outs. Now the line moves to Ian Desmond. I love watching that Exmo replay when a batter makes perfect contact because there's no quiver in the bat at all. It got the sweet spot and the bat goes right with the ball. And that's what LaRoche did. And here's Ian Desmond. 0 for 2 against Gosman in that game last year. Coming off a rough weekend when he went 3 for 14 against the Phillies. 81 for strike one. But they've got the Baltimore starter to 20 pitches already here in the first frame. Got two outs, has been working off the stretch. Ninety five. One well, looked like he had a little cut to it at ninety five. Target away. They go heater. And Gosman left that ball up higher than Caleb Joseph, his catcher, wanted it. You want your uh, stat of the day? Ready. Orioles are 43 and 10 when they score first. That's the best record in Major League Baseball. The Nats are 45 and 14 when they score first. So whoever scores first in this one's got a really good chance of winning, said Captain Obvious. 
Good numbers indicating pitching staffs who know how to hold the lead. Desmond looking and he's gone. Drops the bat, tosses the helmet. The Nats, a couple of hits, can't break through. No score early. takes the mound for his second inning of work. A big part of Roark's success thus far in his big league career is his ability to make adjustments in the middle of a start. You take a look at Roark's ERA in his first two innings of work. It's 3.43 in his career. From the third inning on, it's a full run lower. You, part of the reason for that is that Roark has a vast repertoire of pitches, and he can kind of lean on the ones that are working for him that given day. But part of it is his ability to make physical adjustments mid-start. Roark says that through muscle memory, he's able to spot what he's doing wrong mechanically, if he's doing something wrong, and figure out how to correct it. And that's something that two or three years ago, he says he wasn't nearly as adept at doing. Roark says that it's been a long road for him to get to this point, obviously, but being able to spot what isn't working and adjust it has been a big factor in his success. Adam LaRoche having a look at that one. Able to grab it over near the barrier. Thank you, Dan. AFSIA with that sideline report. The Association for Global Security Professionals. That'll bring in Chris Davis. No panic in that guy. Well, if you remember last time out, as you look at LaRoche make the nice catch with Tanner Roark's out at, at Florida against the Marlins. He, he was kind of scuffled in the first couple of innings. I talked to him on the plane, and he, and he said he was kind of feeling for the strike zone, aiming it. He said, I think he got to the third inning. He said, you know, I'm just going to let it rip. I'm going to go out there and really attack the strike zone. And, you know, we sit here and talk about shoulders flying and spinning off and release points. And sometimes it's just as simple as a mindset saying, you know what? Forget this feeling for stuff. I'm just going to attack these guys. And then all of a sudden the fastball was down. The curveball was crisp. The changeup was in the zone. So he made the adjustments. And... I'm going to have another nice outing. Yeah, may all pitchers struggle giving the other team a grand total of one walk in three innings. But he did have a lot of long counts. Jordani Valdespin got him for a leadoff homer in the fourth. He shut the door the rest of the way onto his seven innings. Facing Chris Davis, who's in a big time scuffle, 2 1 pitch. Davis out ahead of it. He's 0 for his last 15 and hitting a buck 94. Uh, same could be said for hitting too. You know, a lot of times hitters go look at the videotape, and my hands are here, and my foot is here, and my shoulders doing this. Attack the baseball, see it, and hit it, and don't think about anything. Well, I remember. I remember one time when you saw my golf swing, you called it paralysis by analysis. Yeah, and, were, and we can all get into that yeah, rut. You were thinking a lot. I said, just just let it rip. Sometimes that's the best thing. Three two with one out. Target inner edge. Roark Ginner got it in there, and Davis able to fight it off. And this guy was one of the most dangerous hitters in all of baseball last year. Some American League pitchers would tell you the most. With an amazing 53 homers, 138 RBIs, tops in baseball in both categories, and he also had 42 doubles. 
He got a 3-2 changeup that missed, and he's the Orioles' first base runner. All right, some more fireworks. August 15th, after the Nats play the Pirates at 7.05. Post-game event will feature military pageantry and patriotic theme music, beginning with a performance from the U.S. Air Force Honor Guard Drill Team. So call the number on your screen or go to the website slash fireworks for more info. Did I see that Andrew McCutcheon was put on the DL today for the Pirates after getting drilled in that Diamondback series? He will not be playing against the Nats. That's who they open up that next homestand with well, on that Friday. That's awful if it was from that hit by pitch. Target in. Off Roark. That's a base hit for J.J. Hardy. Tanner Roark took quite a shot. Roark waving everybody off the field. That's a football player out there, folks. You can't hurt him. <laughs> Got him right in the hamstring, it looks like. <laughs> He's trying to stop him, and Lee Coons, Matt Williams, Steve McCaddy keep on coming. Yeah, it didn't feel good, but I don't think it's going to affect his performance today. A little laugh with his third baseman, Anthony Rendon. You see him saying, get out of here. I got this. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know how you can't love that guy if you're an ass fan. Seriously. Just brings that football mentality to the mound every fifth day and comes right after you. That'll bring in the second baseman, Ryan Flaherty. According to reports we got today, the Orioles are definitely still in the market for an everyday second baseman. Flaherty's hitting in the low 200s. And they thought they were going to get Cabrera before the Nats did. That ball's going to carry to Span. Throw to second. Double play. Chris Davis went wandering on a ball extremely hard hit. And Denard Span turns it into a deuce. Well, when you're struggling to score runs, that's a big mistake by Chris Davis right there. You got to know that you have a center fielder that plays shallow. He took off like there was two outs. Denard Spann, who catches everything in center field, relays it to Cabrera for the inning ending double play. Wow. A base running miscue once a night at the major league level. And this one, for you kids at home, you've got to check where your outfield is playing before every single pitch and know that they're standing shallow. When you see a low line drive, the first thing you do is you go belly to the ball and you watch Chris Davis at the top of the screen. He just takes off. He didn't forget how many outs there were. He just really didn't know where Denard Spann was standing. And that's an okay mistake, I guess. If you're scoring a lot of runs as a ball club, but with the way your offense is going right now, you have to run the bases as good as you can, I guess, and, and make all the right decisions. That's a big double play right there because that's two hard hit balls in a row off Roark, and they may have had him on the ropes. That was Denard Spann's sixth assist this year and the 35th of his big league career. Bryce Harper, bottom of the second. 
Can the defense give the offense a little momentum? And we're going to see something that we haven't really seen other teams do against Bryce Harper, and that's put a LaRoche-like shift on. He's going to bunt right here. Third baseline. Available. He like was I thinking said. about maybe just driving one through there. Like I said, he's hacking all the way right here. Orioles shiftage already costing them one base hit tonight. You really can't argue with how good the Baltimore defense has been, though. Percentage, they're the best in the American League. In errors, they have the third fewest. 51. Mm hmm. Well, the way Bryce has been swinging lately, I don't have a problem with this shift. I think he's been kind of getting around the baseball, pulling it a lot on the ground. I'll say that and hit one to the left side, but I understand why they're doing it. 83. Gosman showing some good off speed so far. Bryce last 16 games 15 hits 294 over that time. They won it up. It was up and in that's about all Bryce could do with that. Facing Gosman for the first time. Nats made him throw 23 pitches in the first inning. And a 1 2. And that's right to J.J. Hardy, the shortstop who was playing up the middle. All right, when the Nats win, everyone wins all season long. When the Nats win and score seven or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu prices at papajohns.com by entering promo code NATS50. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's official pizza of your Washington Nationals. Here's Sazdrubal Cabrera. Orioles know all about him. Longtime American leaguer. He's faced Gosman once in his career, 0 for 1. From the left side is Zanat. He's 2 for 7. Overall in his first three games, 2 for 13. And again, as we were making that point, as Flirty hit that line drive last inning, the Orioles thought they had drawn a bead on bringing him to Baltimore before the Nats came in at the end and got him. Their shortstop Flaherty hitting 206, and they still think they might need an upgrade at second base. He'll handle that one. Two outs on a couple of ground balls. Inside the numbers with STG. Nats overall at home are 32 and 22. And that's despite losing a couple over the weekend to the Phillies. Only the Pirates have more home wins in the National League. Pittsburgh has a record of 34 and 21. Oakland has 35 home wins, the Angels 38. So stay away from Southern California or the Bay Area if you're expecting to win any road games. Ramos rams one to right. See you later. Over the scoreboard, the Nats lead 1-0. Number four for Ramos. That's a number eight batter <laughs> any American League team would love to have. Yeah, you got to be careful of those eight hitters. Those guys will slap singles on you all day. Look at this. Wilson Ramos got a center cut fastball. Let it get deep and admired it for a second. But that's where it goes here at Nats Park. Right center field. That's the runway. And Wilson Ramos puts the Nats ahead. One to nothing. 45 and 14 when they score first. The Nats 88th homer of the year. They're second in the last two weeks. Great timing. Tanner Roark has five hits this year. Counts 1 1.
Gosman just gave up only his third homer of the year. Hasn't been in the big leagues all year. This is his 58th inning. Stretches the arms and the glove up high. Comes down and gets into his abbreviated windup. And blows it by Tanner Roark. But Tanner has a lead the next time he throws a pitch. Wilson Ramos is fourth of the year. Absolutely crushed to right center. And for the strong young catcher, career number 39. Wilson Ramos gets the Nats on the board. His third homer, 15th RBI in his last 26 games. Well, that hand's getting stronger. Matt Williams talked about the other day that the power is going to follow. And you see right here a great example. Wilson Ramos going opposite field home run. The Buffalo checking in early to put his ball club up. And let's see the guy in the front row doing the Buffalo. Look at that. <laughs> Went right over his head. Oh, that's a great shot. That's a great piece of hitting. It's 375 to the middle of the scoreboard. It went slicing over that, probably at least another 20 feet up. Caleb Joseph, the catcher, leads off for the Orioles in the third. Matt Weeders, of course, all kind of injuries this year. Joseph, 28 year old guy who was in the minor leagues for six years. Double A buoy the last couple of years. He's out of Lipscomb University. And he checks one to left. This game is tied as Harper can only watch it. And for Caleb Joseph, his fifth of the year. So the catcher's serving notice regarding power tonight. Both in the eighth spot and both go deep. Roar gives up his 10th home run of the year at 137 innings. Oh, he just pulls his hands in nicely right there to get the barrel of the baseball. The ball elevated, and Joseph took care of the rest. Short, compact swing ties this one at one. Kevin Gosman, one career at bat. And on his second, he almost got his first base hit. Flared it foul. And Roar doesn't give up the long ball very much. Hey, as long as you give up solos, you can win a lot of games. Well, there's a lot of orange in this ballpark tonight. You probably heard the ovation for Joseph's home run. And remember, it's a rain out. And Nats fans can trade in their tickets for whatever game they want. So you would figure there'd be a lot of tickets available for tonight's game. If you came to the original game and you're a Nats fan, you say, oh, I don't want to go to that rain out game. I'm going to pick this game or that game. And a lot of tickets available and the Orioles fans came down in bunches and it's loud and very orange right center here comes worth he'll get there Kevin Gosman takes a couple of good hacks but you love the way here on the 4th of August both fans or both teams fans reacting to every piece of content yeah. everything that happens out there it's a great atmosphere well we were before we were getting ready to go on tonight I looked at you and I said there's a serious buzz in this ballpark it's jumping 
And it's great for baseball in this area to have both teams in first place. I got a text from a buddy of mine sitting downstairs. He said, down here, it's a playoff atmosphere. That's great. First Top of place. the order, Nick Markakis. Markakis, a bouncer, back to Roark first time. Tanner made a good athletic play to bounce off the hill and take it. Markakis has had 41 multi-hit games this year. That's third most American League behind Jose Altuve and Robinson Cano. This one kind of spins over to the left side for Rendon. Two outs. Manny Machado next will go inside some more numbers with STG. Best record since the end of May. The O's and the Nats are right there behind the two hottest teams in baseball. L-A-A -A and O-A-K. And we'll see what the Pirates do now for the next couple of weeks without Andrew McCutcheon. Machado pulled the ball first time to Rendon. Left side of the infield, the Nats really played this guy to pull. Early in a ball game, as much as you'll see against any right-handed batter, I mean, Rendon's not even in your picture there. He's about maybe 10 feet in from the third base line. This guy's got some great hands. Seven for his last 12. Busted bat. And if Desmond makes a good throw, and he won't even throw it because he booted it, Machado will be just a 500 hitter against the Nats. And maybe that ball was spinning some on Ian Desmond. He might have rushed it with a good guy running. But that's a makeable play that should have been the third out. And now you've got Adam Jones coming in. Nats 65th air of the year. Desmond's 17th. This is not a good lineup to give extra swings to. And Adam Jones just got under that one. Bryce Harper, Roark gets out of the inning in a hurry. Orioles tie it on Caleb Joseph's fifth home run. photos for a chance to have it shown on TV as brought to you by AT&T. Lefty lefty yesterday didn't bother Denard Span against Cole Hamels did it. Got the RBI in the third inning put the Nats on top. He would single steal two bases walk and score before the day was over. We talk about Tanner Roark not getting a lot of play on a national basis. What about Denard Span as a leadoff hitter? 
That guy deserves a lot more love than he's getting. He's been as good as anybody in the leadoff spot and in center field. You know, the good news about today was I didn't hear anything about his diminishing base stealing skills. <laughs> <laughs> He I, is doing everything a leadoff guy should. He's gotten better every day since I've been here and seen him play. Fouled out to the left side first time up. He's won for four career against Gosman with an RBI. He had an RBI double against him last year that he pulled down the right field line. Infield. Pinching a little at the corners with the third baseman on the grass. And Span's going to drive this ball. That's going to hit 385 away in left center. Adam Jones got to it in a hurry to keep Span from going to third. That's his 30th double of the year. And Denard Span has just been fantastic. Might have been able to stretch that into a triple. But he was assuming that Adam Jones was going to pick it up cleanly. Great swing by Span. Let the ball get deep. We always talk about how he lets the pitcher supply the power. He plays Pepper. Great example right there. But watch Jones go for this ball twice. He tries to pick it up right there. And that could have led to a triple. But Span had already kind of pulled up going into second base. And he thought about going to third. But had to stay at second. Nice swing. Lead off double. And that's in business. This is interesting now. In six career innings at Nationals Park. Kevin Gosman's given up eight runs on 12 hits. Including four hits already. In this one. And here's Rendon. Very yeah. adept at hitting the ball the other way. Yeah, get him over. See him if in. they jam him. And they do. Ball one. Yeah. They don't want him to get it over. Do they? No. Lined out to left first time up. That was out in the gap in left center and Cruz. A hundred feet off the line shading that way again. Rendon base hit. Span was doing the right thing. He was on his way back to second there. Then he gets himself to third base and the table is set for Worth and LaRoche. And the Span Rendon combination is doing it again. Former teammate of mine, Stan Javier, used to tell me all the time with the runner on second, nobody out. He said, You can move him to left field, FP, with a base hit. And that's exactly what Anthony Rendon did right there. Got something off speed, turned on it. You see Machado playing shallow just in case he was thinking about a bunt, but a line drive single to right, advances Span to third base. So there's different ways to get the job done, and Rendon did. I'm still a fan of the 14 hopper to second base, so sure. Well, hey, if they're going to pitch you inside and go off speed, what are you supposed to do? Late in the game, early in the game, it's yeah. okay to take a chance. Here's Worth. He rifled a single to right center his first time. The guy behind him's one for one. And the Nats about hit the Orioles 5 2. In the dirt, Worth playing traffic cop. Stopping spin. Animated traffic cop. Well, we got so many motorcades in this town. You know, guys <laughs> are a little more animated than they are in, say, Kansas City. Well, he's excited. Tomorrow's his gnome day. He probably won't sleep tonight. Ball two. Heater low. The same stroke he had yesterday when he hit the ball off the top of the wall in right center field is exactly what he wants to do right here. Let it get deep, try to go the other way, use the big part of the ballpark and get something elevated. Belt high fastball. Ball three. Yes. Gosman has missed in the dirt every time, so Jason, no way to think of anything on any of those pitches. And you've already answered yep. to the question FP has, by the way. He wasn't agreeing with me. He was asking the question in my mind, does he have the green light? <laughs> as soon as the cross stone played, I said, yes, he's swinging. Took me a second to catch on. Yes. He likes the 3-0 count. Only a 600 average. And RBI sitting out there. He drives it to center. It's going to fade a little bit and fall to Jones. Span running. Adam will not attempt to throw. The Nationals are right back on top. Good answer. 
2-1 Washington. Jason Worth, RBI number 62. By the way, his August isn't off to a bad start either. Right. Oh, good at bat. Got to a 3 0 count. Look at his face. He's upset that he didn't hit that ball better. He's glad that he got the sack fly and put his ball club up by one. But in a 3 0 count, he was thinking, I'm going to do some damage and score myself included. And you could just tell when you've been around a guy a long time that he'll take the sack fly. But he was thinking more. That must have just been an inch or less down off that sweet spot because it sure looked good off the bat. Here's LaRoche, and he hit the ball hard first time. Wonder to Span might, or rather Rendon might have something in mind here. He's 11 of 12 this year. The Nats continue to have a fantastic stolen base rate, 63, and they've only been caught 10 times. That's 86.3 percent. They ripped off three bags yesterday. And LaRoche takes a perfect fastball to the outside edge. Well, he'll go if they give him a good jump, but but I, I like him staying right here just for the fact that you don't go full shift. If he steals second base, now you got three guys on the right side of the infield of LaRoche instead of, you know, the normal two. So there's holes right now for LaRoche on the right side with a ground ball that might not be there for Endone standing on second. Target. Up and in. You know, and you might say, well, if you don't run the double plays in order, LaRoche doesn't hit into that many double plays. I mean, it's August. He's hit into six this year, and that's pretty low. This one on his hands will be popped up short center. J.J. Hardy out. Nelson Cruz calls him off from left field for the second out. All right, season plan holders, you can renew your plans right now for the 2015 season and reserve 2014 postseason tickets at the very same time. Season plan holders who renew before September 5th will also be eligible for benefits and daily prizes. New for 2015, the National Air introducing Nats Plus. That's tickets plus the status you deserve. Here's Ian Desmond looking to do some two out damage. He was up there with two on two out first inning and on an 0-2 pitch took one on the corner away. That one skips in. Caleb Joseph has had an interesting inning back there. He's blocked at least three. Target way in there. And then Chris Davis had to kind of reach around Rendon to get that throw. Gosman, just 23 years of age, is only his third year professional baseball. First rounder, number four overall, two years ago out of LSU. Starting and then stopping. Rendon, too bad he stopped. Two and O's the count. Yeah, hindsight being 20 20, you know, pitch in the dirt, off speed pitch, but sped up his delivery just enough to stop Rendon. Trying to get max effort and max jump right there, I should say more correctly. If you get the jump, you keep rolling, didn't get it, so he stopped. That's why the percentage has been so high for base dealers this season. Go on your best jump. There's that fastball to the outer half. 2-1. That's why I always like having a green light. If you have a green light as a pitcher, as we look at the last pitch, you have the option to either go or not go. When you get the steal sign from the manager, you have to go on that pitch. Good jump, bad jump, horrible jump, whatever. So you have the green light. It's up to you. And if you don't feel the jump and you don't feel like you're getting a good read, you choke it off. You come back to the base. 
So strike one on the Nissan pitch track. Strike two, maybe a little further out, but still got an edge. And Ian Desmond now has a 2 2 count. Like the pitch he struck out on first time might have been a little bit away, but had some run back to it. That one definitely a strike. Yeah, that's stacked right on top of the other one. Called third the first time. Might have been a hair outside, but still a good pitch. Well, the message is clear. Better be hacking if it's close to that outside corner. That's where Joseph goes. And Desmond will pull it on a couple of hops to J.J. Hardy. Nationals gone, but the top of the order gets it done. Span his 30th double. Rendon a single worth the RBI. One home team, a couple of homers by the catchers, big RBI by Jason Worth, Tanner Roark settling in. It's just this atmosphere, you can't say enough about it when these two teams get together. And it means more now than ever before with both up in their divisions. Yeah, it's been electric. It was electric at Camden when we were up in Baltimore. It's electric here tonight. And I think it's just great for this region to have two first place teams going head to head. You kind of feel the electricity, the intensity all the way up here in the booth. and. Good teams playing good baseball. What more can you ask for on a Monday night? A Monday night with the Mets coming in tomorrow could be a good homestand as it turns out uh, for the Nats. But a lot of business to take care of in this one tonight. Long way to go. And Tanner Roark back to work. One thing about Roark, if something happens against him, it usually happens pretty quickly and then he gets the momentum right back. He's got a tough inning here, though, with Nelson Cruz, Chris Davis, and J.J. Hardy. Two righties, a lefty, and they all have pop. Nelson Cruz didn't want to be in the home run derby, concerned about his swing, and he comes out of the all-star break now cold as ice, and with that out, he's 0 for his last 20. And 7 for 67. Inside the numbers with Jeep. So 15 wins and under a 2-5 ERA since the start of last year. Look at the company. Tanner Roark finds himself in. The dominant Kershaw, the hard-to-hit Cueto, and maybe the best pitcher in the American League who faces, or rather that's uh, not Felix Hernandez, it's <laughs> Mr. Hernandez from Miami, and I'm sure Felix is not far down on that list. But I'm telling you, great arms. And Tanner Roark is right there with the best in the game. Up and in. And his 11 wins this year, opponents are hitting just 191 against Roark. 50 for 262. I just wonder what kind of numbers Jose Fernandez would have by now if he was healthy all year. How about next year? Matt Harvey coming back, Fernandez, or Hernandez coming back in the National League. Nets and Marlins will have plenty to be excited about, and the Nats and the Braves probably still doing their thing. I think Matt Harvey's pitching tomorrow. That is high in the strike zone, and Davis could not pull the trigger. 
Remember last time Roark walked him on a changeup, and this time he busted him with a heater. Strikeout number one. Yeah, fourth pitch of the at bat, just as the little front hip run back fastball. Nice pitch, big out. Good to see him establish that. Here's J.J. Hardy, who lined it hard off of Roark's body. First time up. I think I heard in the Mets broadcast today that Matt Harvey's throwing tomorrow in Florida. And they were wondering if they were going to have the updates on the broadcast. So that's good news for them. It sure is. Good news for baseball. Nats will see Zach Wheeler tomorrow. Jonathan Nice Wednesday. Jacob DeGrom on Thursday. And he's pitching as well as any rookie pitcher in the National League now. Two and one to Hardy. It was a check swing. Paul Nark says he didn't go. Three and one. Hardy had a big time three and one rip. JJ's power. I'm sure a little puzzling to the Orioles this year or lack thereof with four home runs. This guy has had some pop 25 last year 22 the year before that and 30 his first year with the Orioles that'll be out of play. Here's Roark averaging 12 pitches per inning. Hardy goes the other way. Great swing by him. Worth over. It checks up in front of him. And Hardy will stay at first base with two outs. He's two for two. Not a good swing right there. Not a bad pitch from Roark. J.J. Hardy just staying on the fastball away and driving it to right. There's Ryan Flaherty who hit the daylights out of the ball first time. That line out to span. His average will start climbing big time if he stays with that swing. You see him roll that top hand, head right to the baseball. Beautiful swing by the Orioles shortstop. Pretty good throw by Jason Worth, too. Well, he knew the importance with two outs of keeping that runner at first. Orioles have a record in interleague of six and four. The Nats are eight and eight. One and two against the Baltimore Ball Club. Trying to make the all time series a little closer. 28 21 O's. And Tanner Roark misses with the off speed up and away. Like a breaking ball that didn't do a whole lot. Right side Cabrera to his left slides. Yes. As he pops up and throws. He's made three outstanding plays since reporting to Washington on Friday. Do it as Drubal. Going to his left again with the slide play. Spin move gets up and finds the target. Look at this. How smooth is this guy been at second base? Throw answer, real smooth. Right on the money. Nice play.
Fourth inning, time for a game summary. Two to one Nationals. Jason Worth, one for one. Zach Fly, Caleb Joseph, a tater for the Orioles, his fifth. And let's check out the Buffalo. He got this party started. Back at the second inning, just a little location mistake. He wanted that in the outer half. It ran back right into Wilson's power zone, and he goes opposite field tater to put his ball club up by one and watch the guy doing the Buffalo right there in the front row, <laughs> banging himself in the head. That might have been just as good as the home run. Tater speed 100. Harper, Cabrera, and Ramos, bottom of the fourth. Tanner Roark's thrown 53 pitches in four innings. Kevin Gosman, 50 in three innings. And Bryce Harper against a shift, bounced out to J.J. Hardy. Right where he is, up the middle here, leading off bottom four. Manny Machado, the only guy at home on the left side. Well, you're thinking about a Bryce double, or rather a Bryce bunt first time. I'm thinking if he bunts it hard to third base, he might get a double. He'd try for one. Takes it low, 2-0. 34 of his hits to center or right. And it's not a bad ratio there. There's times when Bryce bunts and you're like, well, well maybe he could have thought of a better time to bump, but right now, and it's a free hit. It's not that easy, but if you can get it down and push it hard toward Bob Henley anywhere in that area, just get it by Gosman. It's, it's, it's a knock. Machado's playing shortstop. Yeah, and he's 75 feet from the third base bag. Three and one, pretty good take. Fastball at 97. Well, you work to get to a 3 1 count, now you let it loose. Try to catch one out in front. Bryce Harper with a good at bat. He took what the game gave him there, and he's aboard. Leading off of the Nats have had two consecutive leadoff men on now. It's a good take. That wasn't an easy one. A borderline pitch. He was looking for something belt high right down the middle. Didn't get it. Takes the walk. So the Nats have had five hits and a walk. Six base runners already. As Drupal Cabrera pulled the ball first time. Ryan Flaherty threw him out. Doesn't mind hopping on that first one if it's in the zone. 273 career hitter. It's his eighth year in the big leagues. And had to skip the back foot away from that. Got a call in there. Mercedes Benz will track it. Yeah, he's been pretty good to the glove side tonight with that fastball, running it back to both righties and lefties. Target in there again. It's stopped by Joseph. That's at least eight or nine that have skipped into the mid of Caleb Joseph. He's seeming to turn his glove over right at the last second. Athletic play by the Orioles catcher. Yeah, he doesn't get that glove turn. That thing can end up anywhere. In the river, maybe. Maybe. That's two bases, by the he way. Said anyway. It's a ground rule. Off the capital. It's eight blocks away. That'd be a pretty big ricochet.
2 1 pitch, and he puts another one in the dirt. Going off speed at 86. A lot of managers start the runner right here. Let's see what Matt Williams does. 3 1 count. Is Bryce going? Right side hitting room with the runner being held. Harper holding. And Cabrera misses by about a yard. But hitting one hard into the corner. Geared up for the heater. 3 1 count. Just a hair quick. Good swing. So 10 pitches already this inning. He's walked him in. See, if you start Bryce right here and he gets to second base, then you pitch around Ramos, right? Well, we'll see. Won't nobody yeah. out. Tough call. It looks like he's going, though. Nope. That one's fair. And Bryce Harper can go all the way to third easily. The Nationals putting base runners together for the third time in four innings. You know, I don't know it's only been a few games, but I am digging what Cabrera is bringing this ball club so far offensively defensively. I mean, that's a good at bat. That's a major league at bat. Get a 3 1 count catching a little bit out front making the adjustment on a 3 2 count. Just letting the ball travel a little bit longer. Letting it get a little bit deeper and. Uses the hole that Bryce Harper provides for a first to third situation. What's not to like about as Drupal Cabrera as a net. Impressive. Well, they're calling Ramos here, who hit one out over the scoreboard first time tonight. Two one Nats, six hits already. Possible big innings sitting out there. Yeah, no fastball near the plate. First pitch that time. Well, we talk about it with Steven Strasburg. We talk about it with other guys that throw hard. Even though you throw 95 to 99, you still have to locate that heater. And when you throw it 71% of the time, you better. Great take on a breaking ball. That thing was a strike for a while. And Wilson Ramos really has to count his favor now. Dave Wall is going to come out and try to tighten up his right-hander. He's been falling behind here. He has nine outs and he's thrown 63 pitches. Well, nobody hits homers against him as a rule except the Nats. We mentioned the three in the game last year. Ramos has him tonight. He's missed on nine of 13 pitches this inning. Well, I'm hoping he throws a strike right here. He does. And that's a double play ball. The Nats will score one. No RBI for Ramos, but it's three to one. Lead off walk comes back to haunt the Orioles. Matt Wilson got a pitch to see him shaking his head right now getting some high fives from his teammates kind of rolled over a little bit but the third run of the night for the Nats gives him a two run lead. <laughs> the Nats second baseman Cabrera. A lot of credit for that run. Hey yeah, got Harper to third. Santa Roark with the hitter now. Orioles, by the way, have turned 115 double plays. Second in the American League to the White Sox. Two staffs that allow a lot of base runners. <laughs> That's not always the best stat to lead the league in. It means a lot of guys are on base. Well, I like what I'm seeing as far as reactions go from Nats hitters tonight. Jason Worth on a sack, Fly Wilson Ramos right there. 
not satisfied with getting the job done, thinking they should do more as a hitter. You do that when you're feeling good and you're seeing the ball big. When you're scuffling as a hitter, you'll take a sack fly and come back to the dugout and be okay with it. And when you see how they're reacting to pitches they think they should do more with, that means they are feeling really good at the plate, and that's a good sign. 2-1 to Roark. Up and in, ball three with 95. Well, Gosman better end the inning for Buck Showalter right here. He's creating a headache for himself with Span on deck. Three and two. I like that take right there by Roar. You're going to get the same pitch. You got 3 1. Make him throw another pitch. Get him to use another bullet. And it's good baseball. That one got Gabe Morales, the umpire. Checking this clicker. And Roark, he'll swing at that strike. Not an easy play for J.J. Hardy. And look at Roark come within an eyelash of beating an eye. The Nats are playing some good baseball, folks. And they turn a leadoff walk into a big run. Three to one Nats, we are heading to the top of the fifth inning. And you know what, Carp, I live in this neighborhood and I hang out with a lot of Nats fans and I've never seen them this excited for a giveaway in my four years here. Everybody talking about this one. August 5th, that's tomorrow, folks. Hope you can sleep tonight. The Jason Worth Garden Gnome. First 25,000 fans. You can get it at all gates while supplies last. Get your game tickets by calling the number on your screen or go to nationals.com slash tickets and get your gnome tomorrow. It amuses me. I saw the gnome today on the White House lawn, actually. <laughs> hey, let's talk about some defense by the new guy at the number four position. Yeah, done a nice job. Hasn't played there in a few years, and you really couldn't tell. Yesterday against Jimmy Rollins, stealing one, and today going in the hole, the little slide move that we've seen a few times in the throw to me was the impressive part right here. Fallen into right field, didn't have his balance, still got it close enough to add on the Roche. And I think he had the number one play on MLB Network last night, that backhand stab that took a bad hop on him. And that was number one. That was impressive. Caleb Joseph hit his fifth career Major League home run last time up. Roark goes brilliant breaker. 
Out to the corner, slider at 83. And he's got him 0-2 with the pitcher on deck and then Marcakis, Baltimore fifth inning. Off speed. Looks like the home plate umpire said the ball hit the ground. Foul did it tip. Not? He's yeah. saying foul tip that hit the ground. Yeah. This is reviewable. Heard a couple of sounds. Yeah, there's a foul tip. It changed directions. It's a good call. Yep. Up into the glove. Caleb Joseph, 28 year old rookie. And Roark baiting him with off speed stuff since he got it 0 2. Yeah, lots of fastballs tonight from Tanner. Coming into this inning, 34 of his 52 pitches were heaters. It's right off the end of the barrel. Roar career record 18 and 7. Just 27th big league start. 36th appearance overall. Sporting a 239 ERA taking the mound tonight. Inside out swing and the ball slicing foul and out of play. It's the same pitch that Joseph hit for a home run his first time up but based on the sequence and how they've worked him here and him being in a two strike count battle mode and his hands in a different slot trying to hit it to right versus pulling it to left. And a one two out to short Ian Desmond has it. For the achiever in you, PNC with our minor league report. And here's a young man with a blazing fastball. He just got moved up from rookie ball to Potomac. And he was one strike from a seven inning no hitter in game one of a doubleheader. Hector Silvestre from the Dominican. 6 3, 180. And everybody talking about his heater right now. 21 years of age with a live wire for an arm. Well, he's in the Hall of Fame for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. Hey, one strike from a no hitter. Seven innings and you're in the hall. Rick and Keel drove by. He's in the hall. He almost had a no no. Gosman, pretty good at bat first time, flew out to Jason Worth. Right handed pitcher, left handed hitter. Originally drafted in the sixth round in 2010 by the Dodgers. Went on to LSU. I'm liking his approach. I mean, he's got an idea. Foot down early. I mean, for an American League guy that doesn't get to do this very often, he he's definitely has more than a clue. Roark on three and one. Got the inside corner. Nissan will track it. On the other side of the plate, but looks like it just got the corner. And he battles back to get him. A couple of borderline pitches went Roark's way, two outs. Now that's 37 bucks right there to the DC area Toyota dealers. They're helping children and their families by making a donation of that to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Top of the order. Nick Marcakis, two ground balls, 0 for 2. Gosman looked like he wanted to walk, and Gabe Morales said, No, you're not walking. Good run on that 92 to the outside edge.
And a breaking ball came into Marquecas. He's going to leave the yard if it's fair. And the Orioles have hit another home run. That one dropped right into Marquecas' power zone, and he hits his 10th. It's a 3 2 game. Well, it's a sweet swing right here by Nick Marquecas. He just stayed back on the curveball. And you see the location mistake. Ramos wanted it to be a backdoor curveball, but it broke right into where lefties do their damage and drop the barrel on the baseball. A lot like Caleb Joseph's home run. Joseph's a fastball, though, but both inside, both just drop of the hands. Now a ball scorched to left, and Harper's going to grab it off the bat of Manny Machado, and he's 0 for 3. It's only the second time this year Tanner Roark's given up two home runs. It happened against the Phillies May 3rd here in a 7-2 loss. That ball scalded. Bryce made a fine play. With the Zimmer Mitt running alone. So there's got to be an ambush somewhere, right? The Zimmer Mitt has secret powers, though. Don't get in Teddy's way. So they did a blockade. Everybody goes down except Abe. Evidently, Abe was staggered and stunned. He just stood there and watched Teddy resurrect himself and break the tape. Bottom of the fifth, top of the order. T-Mobile with our Nats due up this inning. And what they've done career in this ballpark. The Dark Span, as I told you, now hitting over 340 at home this year. Came in 338. Anthony Rendon, a lot of RBIs and home run power. And, of course, Jason Worth. I think that speaks to his comfort level being you know, here for year number two in a different league, different city. You come up with an organization and play there for so long like he did. It takes you a minute. It, it really does. I thought he had a good first year here, all things considered, with you know, trying to figure out a new league. And now you just tell by his body language, he's as confident as any player in baseball. 1-0 pitch. Just spits on that one. Span one for two. Rendon one for two. Worth a hit, a sack fly. LaRoche one for two. So four hits from the top four batters. And Gabe Morales likes that side of the plate. All right, Span shaking his head. No, it's a ball. 
every once in a while as a hitter, you can get so locked in that you actually know the strike zone better than umpire. That's how big you see it. And that could be dangerous at times, especially with two strikes. Yeah, that was a good call by Denard Span. You know, it's too bad doesn't count. He's seen it huge. 2 1 pitch. Right up the middle. As if that call bothered him. And now Denard Span leads the National League with 40 multi hit games this year. 40 nights of eight hours sleep. Waking up in the same position that you went to sleep in. By the way, Hunter Pence had two hits at New York today, so they both have 40 on the year. That is some kind of hit. That's amazing. Well, that's just that. He's getting on base via the walk. He's doing it all right now. The Nationals have seven hits in just over four innings against Kevin Gossman. When you're going as good as the Narn span is, you, you really don't even care who's pitching the next day. You get to the ballpark, you're like, who's pitching today? But when, you, when you're scuffling, they could call up a guy from AAA and you're nervous the night before and losing sleep. He doesn't care. Throw it over. I'm going to hit it. It's looking like a beach ball. Rendon a liner to left clean hit to left on a 1 0 pitch. He'll take it on that corner out there. Well you throw it out there. He's a guy that's thinking about that hole on the right side and he's thinking about. Moving a runner to third on the base hit. Look at that Rendon's got the whole right side and they're pitching him away. Look at setting up out there again. Fastball right there on the outer half at 94. Three two nets. They've out hit the Orioles seven four. And Rendon inside out swing on a fly to right for Marcakis. On the run for the first out. Nets schedule. Next five games, including three with the Mets. Gio and Zach Wheeler tomorrow night. Doug Fister, Jonathan Neese Wednesday night. Make a note, we have a 12:35 matinee Thursday. Jordan Zimmerman, Jacob DeGrom, and then it's on to Atlanta. You're seeing the first two in Atlanta and then Sunday Sunday night will be the ESPN game. Then a day off next Monday and right up to New York. I'll tell you what it's, it's a small point but I think a big one when you're in this point of the season and you play an ESPN Sunday night game and you don't have to play the next day and you're traveling. I mean that would have been a rough one for Matt Williams Club getting in New York about three four in the morning and have a turnaround play a game the next day but they have that Monday off in the Big Apple and they yeah. don't play till Tuesday. That's a break. It's a big break. So for the only time in his illustrious career Sinatra was wrong. For one night it will be the city that sleeps <laughs> at least the Nets. Well speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us who keep <laughs> semi normal hours. Span is 23 out of 25. And as FP often mentions perfect against catchers. Only two times caught this year picked off and that's two and one not a word so this could be an action pitch right here. Well th these are comfy at bats right now for the Nationals hitters in, in the sense that Gosman's not really throwing his off speed for strikes. So now you're just all about the fastball anything he flips up there with any kind of rotation on you're spitting on and you see the heater in the place you're looking for it you go. There, there's really not anything to keep you off balance at this point on a consistent basis. We got a fastball late for it and Mark Cake is drifting to the line. He'll catch the ball fair two outs. 
Boy, Jason Wirth's going to look at his last two at bats and wonder what he might have been able to do. You know, and I say comfortable at bats with all due respect to a mid to upper 90s fastball, as comfortable as they can be with a guy throwing that hard. But looks like he shows you the ball. He's a long arm delivery guy. And he's doing a nice job so far with really just one pitch. One thing you really want to be sure of right now if you're Gosman, don't speed up your delivery so much that you hang something to LaRoche. He's really varying his time to the plate right now with a base stealing threat on first base. You go slide step, sometimes you lose velocity and location, and you don't want to do that to Adam LaRoche. 1-1 one, one pitch. Span started and stopped. And LaRoche lifting one to right. It'll send Marquecas back, but he'll take it short of the track. Nationals get a leadoff hit. They've stranded four, and this one into the sixth inning now. Baltimore has three, four, five coming up on a beautiful evening on the banks of the Anacostia. was a Tuesday night. So here we are on Monday with Tuesday night Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by T Mobile. That's T for Tuesday. We're going to the top of the sixth inning. Tanner Roark having a pretty good ball game out there leading 3 2. The Nats on top. A bit of a roster change today, Dan. A trade of outfielders with Syracuse. Nate McLeod goes down to the DL, Bob. A right shoulder inflammation is what lands him on the disabled list. He got a cortisone shot today. The Nationals don't think this will be something that will knock him out long term, but he's getting an MRI, and he's going to be down at least 15 days. Steven Souza Jr. comes up from AAA Syracuse to take McLeod's spot on the roster. And Souza had just been destroying AAA pitching, led the International League in batting average on base percentage and slug percentage the rare triple threat there and Matt Williams said that he could see Sousa getting some starts Denard Spann and Jason Worth have played a ton of late and the Nats are in a stretch where they play 33 games in 34 days so not really a chance to rest those two outfielders Sousa might get a chance to get it in the starting lineup a little bit numbers were amazing 354 on base percentage 435 18 homers part of his 43 extra base hits and oh by the way he stole 24 bases uh, he's an emergency option at first base, too. He's an emergency option at third base. Well, you're not going to give up anything offensively when he gets in there. 
Steven Souza Jr., 25 years of age, big guy, 6'4, 224. Yeah, he can play. We were impressed with him in spring training, impressed with him up here his first go around, and on the numbers at AAA. He, you dominate a level like that, you show you're better than the level you're playing at, you usually go to the next one. Look out for this count in a one run game. It's three and one to Adam Jones. He's lined out to left. Hit a monstrous fly ball to left that he just got under. And that was some pretty good jamage by Tanner Roark up and in. Jones fouled it off himself. They had a walk in the base hit in the second double play engineered by Span took care of that. Caleb Joseph lead off Homer in the third. J.J. Hardy a base hit in the fourth and then the two out home run by Nick Markakis. Cut the Nats lead in half last inning. Coming into this frame Roark first 20 hitters had thrown 15 first pitch strikes. On a pitch up, bounce to the left side. Ian Desmond with a nice high hop. Guns out the hustling Adam Jones. It's a big out. Was that a Tuesday two hopper to short right there? Sure. Because I never know what day it is, and you just told me it's Tuesday, so now I have no <laughs> idea. It, where I'm sitting, it's tomorrow already, and I'm supposed to be in the sixth inning of yesterday. Lost. Nelson Cruz. Fouled out to first, grounded out to third. That's now a big that, power zone. Yeah. yeah, the eye of the storm is pretty big right there. It's pretty big. Well, he's big. Wow. So, proportionally speaking, his power zone should be big. And if Cruz had thoughts about leaning out over the plate, that fastball almost took his belt buckle with it. Well, he's been chasing down in the way lately, and that's been something he really didn't do early in the season. The slider down the way has been his nemesis of late. So the setup pitch. Here comes Spin. He's got it. Rolling in center field. Two outs. The man is unbelievable. He's made one error in a season and two thirds. And he's made two great plays tonight. MV Span. I mean, what else can the guy do? Those guys looking at the scoreboard for the replay. Denard wants to see the replay. And <laughs> Roll it, boys. Please replace your divots. What a play by Denard Span. I didn't know if he was going to continue to come for that ball, and he's getting a standing ovation right now at Nats Park. Look at this. Appreciating the play of the center fielder. I love it. He is the most underrated outfielder in all of baseball. It's time for the major leagues, other 29 markets, to wake up to this guy. Chris Davis 0 for 1 with a walk. And he has played 10 months of Major League Baseball for the Nationals and made one error. He's starting to be the story of this season for this ball club. You know how when you have one of those seasons, there's always a storyline. Yeah, the pitching's been fantastic. We talked about seven innings, nine of the last ten. But Denard Span, to me, is becoming the story of this year for the Nets. All the talk early in the season about is he going to stay in the leadoff spot, Matt Williams? What do you think? Matt saying, well, he brings more than just offense to the ball club. And yeah, he's going to stay there. And how's that looking now? Change up, strike two. Swing and a miss. That play could be a momentum changer. Watch it again, folks. Let the music play and you enjoy some baseball.
coming off the field in between innings. A pretty special moment here at the ballpark, and it was well-deserved because the catch itself was a special moment. Good pitch by Roark. Cruz lines it out there, but the fact that he kept his head still when his knee digs in to the turf. Look at that. Wow. Flips him over because of his momentum. The ball stays secure in his glove. So, so there's many times as an analyst, it's easy to break down a play right away. But every once in a while, you get that special play where you just turn into a fan and you're in awe of it. That was one of them. And please replace your divots. I mean, it, it took got me the an whole, eagle for that. It took me the whole break to seriously like realize what he did from a baseball standpoint because like a lot of people in this ballpark, I was admiring the work. Nicely done. Desmond Harper Cabrera. He and 0 for 2 strike out ground ball. It's one of the best hitting teams in baseball the Nats are facing not necessarily right now but three two not safe by any means so span doing it all with two hits a run scored worth a sack fly RBI Ramos a home run Wilson sent another run home on a double play ball the Nats haven't gone an inning tonight without at least a hit but a play like that could be a momentum changer in the sense that when he came off the field, the crowd was into it. It was electric here at the ballpark. When he made the play, there was a standing ovation for, you know, a couple of seconds after the play. And we'll see if the Nats can use that in their favor. It, was it the greatest play ever? No. <laughs> but it, it's sort of like a layup to a dunk in basketball. It's why when you get a break away, you dunk it. You try to get the crowd into it. And I have a feeling that that just happened here with Spans catch. One and two to Ian Desmond. Fastball, he strikes out for the 131st time this year. Same pitch he struck out on his first time up. Backdoor fastball. Martina McBride is coming. Nats Park, Saturday, August 16th. Pirates in town. Don't miss this Nats Live post game concert. It's presented by the Travel Channel. It's free. Free with your game tickets. Go to nationals.com slash Nats Live. Bryce Harper. Ground ball out, a walk and a run score. That was a big base on balls. Bryce Drew leading off the fourth. Went to third on a Cabrera single. Scored on the Ramos double play ball. It's about time for Bryce to get a hold of one and put it in a second deck somewhere. Target up and in. They tried that earlier tonight. He hit one hard the other way. Foul. And the count 2-0. Yeah, Gosman's pitch count getting up there came into the sixth inning with 86 on the night. Coming off 103 and 96 his last two times out. Target away. On the pitches away tonight, we haven't seen Bryce try to pull him. You know, he's been going the other way. He's just fouled three or four of them off. And maybe that approach helped him draw that base on balls because they missed out there and he didn't bite. Target in this time. Close. You know, I've wondered about the swing back fastball at Pete. When it's 97, maybe there's not time for it to make it all the way back. Well, this one didn't swing back, and that's why they called it a ball. Nissan on the pitch yeah, track. Not as much as the one to Ian Desmond just did. Harper. Right at the first baseman, Davis. It'll be up to. That's Drupal Cabrera with two down. He hit the ball hard with a single last time up. Inside the numbers. 
highest fielding percentage for guys at second base who've had a minimum of a hundred or rather a thousand at bats or innings while playing that position. He's right up there with Pedroia, LeMayu, Ellis, Uribe. A hunt a thousand innings at that position. Interesting numbers by Jeep. So what's that about a year? Thousand innings divided by 162. 162 times nine is what I'm doing. Yeah, that's true. Give me a calculator or anything. I'm not a rocket scientist. So. <laughs> That's been Can the truck send a slide rule up here, please? It's been established on a nightly basis for the last four years. Two zero pitch. I tell you, this guy's got a live bat. He's three for his first 15. He's hit into about three hard outs. Doesn't bite on that one outside three and one. He'd love to see Gosman off the stretch have to face Wilson Ramos again. Target way in. That's a base on balls. He pretty much threw it where his catcher wanted it. And that's Gosman with his second walk tonight. That pitch counts over 100 now. That same pitch to Bryce Harper. Both called balls. So here's Wilson Ramos. James Wagner from the Washington Post is reporting that Wilson Ramos is going to mix the next three games on paternity leave. He's going home for. The birth of his baby girl. So, it's the last game for Wilson for three days. Going to go home. Good news. Yeah. Royals bullpen busy. Brad Brock. He's been great for them. Their bullpen has really geared it up. Andrew Miller, lefty, good situational guy for them. They have three pitchers with saves. And Ramos will take the fastball low. So we just get into the 9 o'clock hour here at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C. Bob F.P. and Dan on Masson tonight. Nats have not trailed in this game. It's a 3 2. The Ramos Homer put him on top. The Worth sack fly got him back on top. Then the Ramos double play ball add on run. Orioles have hit two solo homers. And Cabrera back. By the way, Cabrera, 62 stolen bases in his career. Well, if you go here, it gives the Orioles a chance to pitch around a guy that hit a home run tonight already. So I, I don't know how. Aggressive he'll be, but he does have a big lead. Osmond's been pretty quick to the plate all night, though. Off speed in the dirt. And this could be one of those careful pitch arounds. Him. He kills the ball out to right center. Cabrera to third, and Wilson Ramos is two for three. I tell you, they took a big time chance by throwing one over there. 
Well, they did because Tanner Roar can handle the bat. And I think obviously a good swing by Ramos, but a nice route by Nick Marcakis. From where I was sitting, I thought this was a run. It looked like it was ticketed for the gap in right center field, but look at Marcakis' hustle, and I think because of the maybe inside-out rotation on the baseball, when it hopped on the grass, it actually hopped back to Marcakis and had a nice high hop, and that kept Cabrera from scoring. It's another good baseball game between these two clubs. Seems like they all are. Tanner Roark, one career RBI. Five for 41 this year. Nine career hits, hot hitter on deck. down the middle. Rollwork to the bag and Davis takes a double away. Outstanding play by the Orioles first baseman. The Nats have stranded six. They've had base hits in every inning tonight. What a battle of the beltways this is. Six, seven, eight ahead. Davis saves the day. Game summary. It's brought to you by Mercedes Benz of Arlington and Mercedes Benz of Alexandria. Three to two Nats head to the top of the seventh inning. Denard Span, 40th multi hit game. That's tied for first in the National League. I'm going to show you Denard's nice second, first, second time up, excuse me, in the third inning. He goes double the other way. How about the defense from Span? First, the double play charges this line drive. Base running error by Chris Davis. That could come back to haunt the Orioles as they're down by one. And this is the play of the night, maybe in baseball. Bernard Span coming hard on the Nelson Cruz liner, taking a divot out in center field. Stop, drop, and roll. Hung onto the baseball right into the palm of the glove. Look at that. Not even in the web. But a web gem nonetheless. Greenskeeper came out to take care of the rest. And here we are, seventh inning. Tanner Roark. His kind of usual thing this year, he's now gone at least six for the 17th time. He's trying to go at least seven for the 11th time. In his last four times out, seven innings, one run given up. J.J. Hardy, a couple of hits, one off the body of the pitcher, the other down the right field line. And he rips his third hit into the left field corner, and that gets into the deep corner. 
Bryce Harper, he knows that corner down there. He's just down there to retrieve it. And J.J. Hardy is more than half of the Baltimore offense tonight. Yeah, third hit of the night for Hardy, a leadoff double. And Bryce Harper plays this the way he should have. He's hoping it kicks off this little part of the wall that jets out, and then he could have a play at second base. So he's laying back thinking it might hit. It doesn't. It goes down the corner, and he has to chase it down there. So probably a double either way, but I like the way Bryce played that. He was gambling that it was going to kick toward him, and he'd have a play at second. Good swing by Hardy. He's hit the ball hard all night. Here's Ryan Flaherty trying to move the runner. He's going to do more than that. That ball's off the wall, and this game is tied. Ryan Flaherty, 18th RBI of the year. And that's a 206 hitter who's hit the ball well three times tonight. Well, he just stays short and compact right here. He's trying to move the runner. And in trying so, he shortens up his swing, barrels of the baseball, and almost had himself a two-run homer. Easy read for Hardy. It hits high off the wall, and this game's tied. Good swing by the Orioles' second baseman. Oriole fans making lots of noise. Nats fans trying to shout him down. Well, this is what Baltimore needed, FP. Just crunching some numbers. And you know this is going to change. Adam Jones is 0 for his last 16. Nelson Cruz 0 for 21. Chris Davis 0 for 17. Their big guns are 0 for their last 54. So they needed somebody to step up. And tonight has been J.J. Hardy and Ryan Flaherty. Well, when you looked at their numbers coming in, you were just hoping tonight wasn't the night they busted out. Because the last time we saw the Orioles, their offense was as good as we had seen all season long. You heard about how they had struggles as you look at double barrels in the Nats bullpen. Caleb Joseph, the catcher, number eight hitter. So it's Stam in the righty, Deadweiler the lefty. Tanner Roark, three runs on six hits. One of them by Caleb Joseph, a long home run back in the third. Looking to bunt, which uh, probably means they're about to pinch hit, and Delman Young is in the on deck circle. Bunt it perfectly to Rendon. Makes the third baseman handle it. Over to Cabrera. Sacrifice is good. 5 4. That'll bring in the right handed hitting Delman Young to bat for Gosman. Infield in. And the bottom of the order is hurting Tanner Roark. Baltimore leads for the first time. Well, the Knicks have had lots of chances tonight. They've stranded six runners. Gosman kept them in the game, and now he could be on the right side of a decision. Young now 9 for 17 as a pinch hitter for the Orioles, and now all of a sudden Tanner Roark elevated. And the Orioles taking advantage. Quick strike offense here in the seventh. The Orioles put up two, and that's going to do it for Tanner Roark. Well, Roark had everything going his way into this inning. Hardy, Flaherty, and Young get him, and Baltimore now up on top. Nats bullpen goes to work.
Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Trying to get this thing back right. The Nats bullpen takes over for Tanner Roark. Four hitters on six pitches in this inning doing damage and now an important role for Ross Detweiler. Yeah, fastball averaging 93 for Detweiler this year, up a click from last year. Curveball 10% of the time at 78 miles an hour and a change up at 85. Seems like all those seven inning stints in a row finally got to Tanner Roark. He hit the wall here in the seventh. We showed you his last four starts, all seven inning jobs, and looked like it finally hit him. Nick Markakis' career against Detweiler, four for nine with a home run. But that was the first time he ever faced him, eight at bats ago. And Ross has retired him on a pretty regular basis since then. Trying to strand some more runners here as. Delman Young leads short lead off first with one out here in the seventh. Mark Akis a homer last time. Nats were up 3 1 at the time. And he got one right inside the foul pole into the Nats bullpen fifth inning. Good fastball runs to the inside edge. <laughs> Left field. Harper can't get there. And now the Orioles have four hits in this inning as Marquecas drops one in. It'll bring in Manny Machado. And he won't be facing Ross Detweiler. Well, the fact that you lost the lead, never a good thing, but you got to keep this game right where it is if you're Matt Williams and company. You got the top of the order due up in the bottom of the seventh with Denard Span leading things off. So, yeah, big right hander coming up. Matt Williams going matchups right there. Now he goes to his right hander. Craig Stammen coming in. This call to the bullpen package by the UPS store. Your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Two on, one out. And he'll face Manny Machado. They've never faced each other. Oh, well, Matt Williams going with the, the sinker from Stammen for the ground ball right here. Craig Stammen, three pitches, two seam fastball, low 90s. 
curveball slider, 33rd appearance for Stammen. And right, he's hitting 248. Matt Williams going for the double play right here in the right on right matchup, and it was the right move. Danny Machado's hit into 12 of them this year. That ball hit out in front of home plate. But Matt Williams is by the book. He, he rarely uses his A bullpen as a head bullpen when he's behind. Every once in a while, you'd see Davey Johnson throw, you know, Clippard in there, Storn in there. When the Nationals were down by a run to keep it right where it's at, but. You know, Matt has a lot of confidence in the other guys, and he can't bury his bullpen right now by using those guys every single night. You can't. Davey Johnson yeah. used to talk about it all the time. I gotta get contribution from everybody down there, so I don't run these guys into the ground. Yeah, that was a dangerous high fastball to Machado. 0 for three tonight. Hit the ball hard right at Bryce Harper last time. Remember last game the O's played at Nats Park. They had all those home runs. I believe in the ninth. The eleventh. Like I said, the eleventh. Yeah. It was the last inning, but it was a barrage. It was a quick strike offense, and you didn't see it coming. Manny Machado had five hits that night. He homered in the eleventh. So did Davis and Hardy. Yeah, you, you look at some of these numbers like you said, you're hoping you're not sitting on a powder keg. Three and two. Because you know, FP, one inning in a tight ball game on the road can get you going. And they better hit because they're heading for Toronto. Yeah. And Nat's trying to keep it right here. We'll see if Buck decides to start the runners. 3-2 with one down and a huge pitch in this game had Machado reaching to foul it away. Well, that swing right there by Manny Machado is telling you what he's thinking. He, he's thinking pull. That was an emergency hack on a pitch on the other side of the plate that he just flipped foul, but he wants something close to him that he can do some damage with. He almost showed his hand right there by that swing, and you'd think that Wilson Ramos and Craig Stammen took note. Well, he has hit the ball hard against the Nats this year. There's another one. Coming around third, Delman Young. Bobby Dickerson will hold him, and the bases are loaded. And the Orioles just can't be retired here in the seventh. That's five hits. The only out, a sacrifice by Caleb Joseph. Now it'll be Adam Jones against Craig Stanton. But he didn't miss by much. He, he wanted that pitch away. Ramos set up away based on the swing we just talked about. The Stamma threw it right down the middle, and Machado hit it right down the middle. Adam Jones' career, one for three with a home run against Craig. He's hit into eight double plays this year. Whatever you strike out stuff, whatever you can do. Tough guy to double up. And slider's been the out pitch. But you gotta get strike one. Yep. And Adam Jones almost busted his wristband swinging at that. Well, he got away with one. That was a slider that didn't slide right down the middle. Cement mixer. And Jones was on it. 
scoreboard crew got tired of hearing let's go O's, so they put let's go Nats up on the board, and it's like a college crowd right now. Two sides going at each other. One one to Adam Jones. Another base hit. They're not going to run on Bryce Harper. The line's moving, and the Orioles lead five to three. And all five of those runs will be charged to Tanner Roar. Well, Steve McCaddy going to go out and talk to Craig Stammen right now, but a nice swing by Adam Jones. He got a slider right down the middle again, so the slider not doing what Craig Stammen's used to doing. Kind of got around that one. Not the worst pitch in the world, but Jones looked like he was sitting on the slider. And you're right, the line is moving. Usually for Stammen, when he throws one first strike, he tries to bounce the next one. But he saw in the expo his fingers to the side of the baseball, not on top, and that might have been the difference, and that might be why McCaddy's out there to talk to him. Next up, Nelson Cruz. One for one career against Stammen with a single. I mean, they just need the Orioles to hit the ball at somebody here. Here's another guy who's bounced in to 12 double plays this year. Two doubles started the inning and now four consecutive singles for Baltimore. They've out hit the Nats 10 8. I'll tell you what, they are a very opportunistic offense. I don't care what the numbers say. Based on what I've seen this year, they're a quick strike, fast break, and when they come at you, they come at you with a vengeance. of Cruz. That's a good pitch by Craig. Two seam fastball in off the plate. If he's going to swing at that, he might swing at that slider away if you can execute it. Did he go? He did, says Paul Nard down at first. Good appeal by Wilson Ramos immediately. Oh, you make the call. I thought he went. Yep, that went pretty far. I think it's more importantly that that pitch wasn't close. It was way off the plate in. Right on his hands, and Cruz able to fight it off. So the dilemma here for Craig Stammen and Wilson Ramos is the slider's been the out pitch. It's really not sliding like he's used to it doing in most of his outings. Cruz isn't getting the fastball in. The dilemma being, do you go to the out pitch, the slider away, or do you keep pounding them in right here in a big sequence? You keep this in a two-run game, you never know what's going to happen. This is this is a huge pitch. Another fastball. I'm getting closer. Mercedes Benz will track this at bat. Well, they're all in. Except for that first pitch. Look at it. Off the plate in with a two seam fastball. And Cruz will go to right field here. That ball into foul ground and into the seats. See, they went to the other side with the slider right there, and, and, and Cruz looked comfortable with that swing. Uncomfortable on the fastball, and watch this one. He's on this. And just a good pitch height-wise by Stammer that he really had to go down and dig it out.
Still one out, one ball, two strikes. And a ball ripped. Rendon Cabrera around the horn, 5 4 3. And a big time collision at second base. Adam Jones went in some kind of hard, and I think he got a piece of Cabrera. There was a huge collision at second base, and that's the way Adam Jones plays, but I didn't see the slide. I didn't see if it was clean. Well, we said the Nats needed them to hit one hard at somebody. Rendon, boom, at second. Inning over. Adam Jones plays he plays hard and he goes in hard right here on the double play this is for a run this is for a three run lead so a hot shot to Rendon Cabrera catches the ball and Jones goes in late and he goes in tough and it was clean I watch it during the break and this is the way Adam Jones plays but how about giving as Drupal Cabrera a lot of credit for hanging tough right here he's an American League guy he knows that Jones comes in hard on double plays and he stayed in there tough in a position he hasn't played a lot lately in a big situation and turned a big time double play. That was good on both ends. Jones playing the game the right way and Cabrera hanging tough. Showing me a lot about what he's about on that double play. That was impressive. David Lowe takes over in left field. He'll bat ninth on the double switch. So Nelson Cruz out of the game. And for the Orioles, Brad Brock. We'll take over. They've got a hot bullpen. He has a 123 ERA over his last 13 games. 18 Ks, five walks. It's going back to the third week in June. Right before the Nats saw these guys. So time to go to work. And Brock throws it in there. Now fastball 93, slider 85, change up 85. And if you want to play October baseball, this is how they're going to be. They're going to be back and forth, seesaw battles, momentum shifts, momentum changes. And it's a great example of what postseason baseball is like right here, right now. Denard Spann off the hands. Hardy after it. He'll get there. Yeah, lots of range here by J.J. Hardy. This looks like it might have had a chance. Machado went for the bunt, so he's not going to get there. Hardy with the angle, runs over. Nice run and play by the Orioles shortstop. Next up, Anthony Rendon, 0 for 2 career against Brock. That's a big out for the Orioles here in the seventh. Yeah, right-handed reliever out there. That might have gotten the inning down to LaRoche at least. Brad Brock, 28 years of age, 6'6, 215. A couple of years with San Diego. 
in relief. Rendon will pop it up to the right side. All right, we promised you earlier in the game. Here it is, AT&T fan photo. It's a family at Nats Park. The sunglasses family. Jason Worth looming large in the background. Thanks for your photo, guys. I have no idea what your names are. We're okay with that. Yeah. Worth one for two. Base hit in the first, sack fly. In the third, they put the Nats on top, 2-1. They would add a run. Marcakis would homer to make it 3 2. And then the O's just got three runs on six hits in the seventh. Worth against Brock, one for one with a home run, also a base on balls. That ball's well hit. But Adam Jones covers a lot of ground. The Nats go one, two, three for the first time tonight on the heels of a big Baltimore seventh inning. Zach Wheeler tomorrow night. Six and eight. He's one of four career against the Nats with a 475 ERA. But they are a young and improving pitching staff. Gio coming off a rough outing against the Phillies Thursday night. He wants to right the ship. And he's won six of eight career against the Mets at 3.10. 630, Johnny and Ray. And we will be with you from the booth at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Craig Stammen into the eighth now. Chris Davis is two for three career against him with a home run. Huge double play ball to keep it at two, a 5 3 game. And Wilson Ramos took that one. Mask and shoulder. Ricochet piece. Chris Davis a walk and a couple of strikeouts against Tanner Roark. Three and one. First base hit 
in his last 18 at bats. So Adam Jones busted up an 0 for 16 last inning. And Davis his first hit in quite some time. And now the guy who's done the damage tonight, J.J. Hardy. Hardy career against Stammen, two for five with a home run. Kind of an odd season for JJ. We talked about the lack of home runs, only four all year, but his batting average this year is 17 points above his career average. What a going. Swing and a miss. Ramos into the runner and probably a break for the Nats, although Span was coming in. That ball was labeled for center field. Third stolen base for Chris Davis. You talk about an ambush steal. And they're sending him back to first. Did I'm missing something right here. Buck Showalter out. If there is interference on Ramos, runner has to return. Oh, the runner's out if there's interference on Ramos. So the batter is out. Oh, yeah, you're right. Runner, uh, batter would be safe at first. So we're trying to sort it out. And if there's hitter interference, the runner's out. And so what is it where a runner just goes back? Unintentional. Let's see. There's no contact at all. There has to be contact to call interference. And Ramos launched it. And, and again, I said this a couple weeks ago. It's not that hard to let the PA announcer know what's happening so he can announce it to the crowd. But baseball doesn't do that. Yeah, the game I was talking about, Carp, when the Orioles had their quick strike, it was against Craig Stammen. He went two thirds of an inning that night, gave up five hits, five oh, run runs, and the, a couple of home runs. The so, one up in Baltimore. No, that was here okay. at Nats Park, the other game against the Orioles in the 11th inning when they oh, yeah. went crazy. Right. And sometimes teams just have something on a guy. Three and two. I guess if you go back to that Rendon play at second base and the double play or and they called him safe and span out. It was it was inadvertent interference and they sent. Remember the double play when I think span was out, but then he was safe. Very similar. Runner going again. And JJ Hardy is four for four. It might have been umpire interference now that I'm thinking about it. And if it is umpire interference, the runner has to go back to first base. I was looking at the hitter. Was there contact with home plate umpire Gabe Morales? Was there contact back there with Wilson? I, I didn't see it there. Yeah. Very unusual for Ramos to throw a ball that far off the bat. And now this one gets away, and the nightmare continues. It's irrelevant at this point. Breaking ball in the dirt.
Man, yeah, it looked like Wilson's arm hit his mask, but like I said, it doesn't matter at this point. Runners are second, third, nobody out. Wild pitch on Stammen there. Orioles looking to break this thing open. Yeah. This game has gone south quickly. Infield in. Second and third, nobody out. Ground ball, no chance for any runner to move, and Cabrera, the assist. That'll bring in Caleb Joseph. Jerry Blevins. Well, you would think this is Craig's last hitter. But you got a base to play with right here, and we'll see what they decide to do. Left handed hitting, David Lowe came in on the double switch. Well, Matt Williams has to bring his infield in right here. There's no option at this point. You got to stop the bleeding and I guess you can be careful right here and try to set up a left on left matchup with Jerry Blevins. I think he's going to go right after him. That was 85 drifting up and into the hitter. Caleb Joseph one for two a homer a sacrifice. And then Craig Stanton misses away two and oh. Pitch. All right, you make him hit your pitch in this situation. You got a base open. If he's going to force the issue and swing at that, throw him a couple more and see if he chases. You don't have to throw strikes right here if you're Craig Stanton. Throw pitches that look like strikes. That one got a lot of the plate. This will score two runs. Caleb Joseph has driven in three, and the bottom of the order continues to hurt the Nats tonight. 7 3 Baltimore. Well, that's just unfortunate right there. It's a slider right down the middle, and his slider really hasn't been consistent tonight, and that one didn't do anything, and Joseph was ready for it. It was the right pitch, it just didn't break. He wanted to bounce that in the dirt a couple more times and see if Joseph would swing over the top. He left it up. And he really hasn't had the pitch that he's lived on the last two or three years tonight at all against the Orioles. It's would, been a cement mixer. And then I was wondering, the first pitch he threw was 85, kind of his slider speed, and it just kind of backed up and floated up and into the right-handed batter. And now here's another base hit by David Lowe, and this is getting ugly. Well, and this is what happens when you don't have your A stuff and you got to come out of the pen and it's, you don't have a feel for your slider and that's your pitch. And another tough one for Craig Stammen against the Orioles. He'll make the adjustment next time. He'll figure it out. Just not his night again. He faces eight batters. Six of them get hits. So Jerry Blevins has been warming. Nick Marcakis next. And the Orioles have taken a stranglehold on this one.
and eight hits for the Nationals, and you can go to Fitzner Stadium at Woodbridge. It's your summer home to watch the future stars of the Nats. For tickets, call the number on your screen or go to the website. Jerry Blevins gets the assignment, 48th time this year, ERA up at 5.31. Coming off one of his better outings of the year, a 1 2 3 8th against the Phillies on Saturday when he had a strikeout. Eight pitches, seven strikes. Still only one out in this inning. Runners at first and second. Nick Markakis went 0 for 2 tonight, came alive in the fifth with a homer and a seventh inning single. Well, you just saw lefties haven't been the problem for Jerry Blevins, a 141 average against. Mark Akis, career against him, two for eight. Still trying to keep it within a one swing game. You got six outs to play with. I'm looking for that ground ball double play right here to end this one. Left center. Bryce Harper. He will run it down in the gap. Great range by Bryce for the second out. Nice play. Kind of tailed back a little bit to Bryce, but he got a great jump and had the angle right off the bat. Watch the route by Bryce Harper. Very clean route right to the baseball. Catches it on the run. He's looking for the double play. Not just happy with the out. Nice running catch by the Nats left fielder. Manny Machado will face Jerry Blevins. He's one for two against him. Right side. Under it. Adam LaRoche. Jerry Blevins does a nice job. Last two outings, five hitters in a row retired. Time to get busy with the bats. LaRoche leads off.
Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at ococean.com. And by Navy Federal Credit Union, 4 million members, 4 million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. Orioles have out-hit the Nats 14-8. to A dramatic turnaround in this game in the 7th and 8th innings. And it'll be LaRoche, Desmond, and Harper, bottom of the 8th. Left-hander, right-hander, Brad Brock still out there. He set the Nats down in order on seven pitches in the seventh. LaRoche one for three. And against Brock Career 0 for one. Great take, and it's 3-0. Yeah, get some runners on, see what happens. Base runners needed. Adam Morosh, of course, on the DL a couple of months ago. But he is still eighth in the league in bases on balls with 55. <laughs> that looks like the worst one of the bunch. I mean, the other ones look close. This one looked low to me, but what do I know? Normally, a pitch track doesn't like it. That means it's really low. Pitch track has the lowest strike zone ever. It likes the low pitch. Shift on. Three and one. There's two teams in Nats have played this year, and they've both been American League teams, the A's and the Orioles, that have shown that they can score in a hurry. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of any other team in the National League that the Nationals have played that has that type of offense, and it's escaping me right now. But those two teams, based on what I've seen, I'm not talking about what they do against the rest of the league, based on what I've seen against the Nationals, seem like they can score early and they can score often. Yeah, even Colorado not able to do that against the Nats, and they were banged up a bit. But you're talking about two American League teams that are just about at the top of the charts in every offensive category. Toronto's up there in power. They're but the I'm only just, team that's hit more homers than the Orioles. I'm just saying based on what we've seen, not teams we haven't seen play, and, and I'm thinking of a National League team that can do that, and nothing really jumps out at me. Yeah, that's American League Baseball, I guess. That's, that's the way they play. And it was interesting yet that as we started this game tonight, the Orioles and the Nationals had scored the same number of runs this year. The Nats had made 26 runs up on the Orioles since they met a month ago. That's how Baltimore has been struggling and the Nats have gotten things going. A couple of blowout wins added runs to that. And, and I guess you get spoiled watching the national staff on a daily basis and talk about the bullpen and the starting rotation, how good they've been that you just don't you're not used to seeing teams go quick strike like boom, boom, boom. There's four runs or boom, boom, boom. There's five runs. You just haven't seen it. And the only two teams are. The ones I've discussed, O's and A's. Ian Desmond is 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Three of them taking two outs here in the eighth. All been fastballs and they've all been identical. Outer half, kind of a run back variety. Same pitches. Now Bryce Harper. He's faced Brock once, lined out.
Brad Brock coming into this. 23 appearances, 40 innings. I don't know if Buck Showalter would turn him loose for a three inning save. But he's mowing down hitters right now. 10 o'clock here in D.C. And what a turn of events. A couple of innings ago, the Nats led 3 to 2. O's got three in the seventh, two in the eighth on 10 hits. I'm sure Buck Showalter would like to use only two pitchers, maybe three, heading to Toronto, where the ball can fly inside the Rogers Center. That was 85. Bryce out ahead, one ball, two strikes. Big crowd tonight, one of the biggest ever at Nationals Park. Officially listed at 42,181. The published capacity is 41,408. Off speed pitch, a good take by Bryce. Counts even 2 2. Marquecas. Six in a row to get through the seventh and the eighth by Brad Brock. Orioles by four. It's time for your T-Mobile Game Changer. And we are going back to the seventh inning. And a guy that really knows how to pitch hit, Dumb and Young, going right back up the middle. Now nine for 17 is a pinch hitter for the Orioles this year. And this one gives the O's the lead. It's a valuable guy off the bench. That's pretty impressive. Four RBIs with those hits. Jerry Blevins back to work here. Jones... The pitcher spot. And on deck is Brad Brock. So he may be turned loose for a three inning save, although they have a right hander warming up. Orioles have one more bench guy than they're used to having because of no DH. Not sure why they would hit the pitcher and then replace him. But Darren O'Day's warming up.
If you're Brock, that's when you walk up to Adam Jones and say, hey, don't worry, you got some serious protection in the on-deck so right. They're going to have to pitch to you, buddy. I got you. There's Darren O'Day. He's had a couple of saves for them lately. Right-hander Tommy Hunter has 11. Lefty Zach Britton has 23 saves for the suddenly resurgent Baltimore bullpen. A month ago when the Nats and the O's got together, everybody was asking about if Baltimore had enough pitching to get to October. They had all the offense they wanted. And now the tables have been turned a little bit and they're at least other than tonight. Their pitching has kept them in the games, but they're winning still and that's all that matters. Yeah. That's the dangerous thing when you live and die by offense as a ball club. Yeah, it's fun when you win 10 to 2 and you're hitting taters and everybody's high fiving in the dugout. But I feel like you win consistently over 162 games with pitching and defense. Because when the hitting goes, if it all goes at once, you're in deep trouble. And seen that with the Blue Jays this year. They came out swinging as good as any team ever, and then they all went cold together. Injuries, whatever. And I always liken it to a three-point shooting team in basketball. When they're locked in, they're hot, they're nailing their three-pointers, they're going to win by 20. When they're not hitting their three-pointers, they're going to lose by 20. Well, Brock's going to hit here. Big-time curveball by Jerry Blevins to Adam Jones there, by the way. So he's 0 for 0 with a sacrifice bunt. A lot of the American League teams, they don't even bother to put their pitcher stats, hitting stats in their media guide. So thanks to our crew for helping us out there. And Jerry Blevins dealing all of a sudden. He's got Chris Davis waiting here in the ninth. Denard Spann right there. A few high fives when he gets back to his dugout for that swing. <laughs> RBI baseball is back. All 30 major league teams and 2014 players get the Retro 2 button style baseball game you've been missing. Visit RBI.com for more details and download on your console or mobile device. Just look at Darren O'Day's stats. He hasn't pitched since the 30th, so maybe he's out there. Getting some bullpen work. We'll see when the Nats come up in the bottom of the ninth. Blevins and Davis. Chris Davis, two for seven career with a double against Jerry. Ninety two on the fastball, and he's had a good hook as well. Hitter is out. Jerry Blevins five in a row, suddenly throwing the ball well. Cabrera, Ramos, and then the number nine spot for the Nats.
three and a half game lead in the East over Toronto. The Nationals a three and a half game lead over the Braves in the East in the National League. And right now Baltimore showed why they're a pretty darn good ball club exploding for five runs in the seventh and eighth inning combined. That's a great word. They are explosive, Johnny. After Roark held them four hits over six innings, all of a sudden they exploded for ten hits the last two, plated five runs, and a little pile of dust right here as it happened really quickly. And a lot of doubles, big key base hits. Didn't matter who was out there. Detweiler tried him. He gave up a hit. And then Stammen comes in, and he couldn't shut him down either. So we got a lot of things to talk about, try to make some sense of this one. But as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning, that's why you play nine innings, my friend. Yes, it is. We've scored four before in the Absolutely. ninth. And, uh, just bear down, go get them. And don't ever give up to that last out is posted. Who right, said, buddy. Who said that? I did. Thank you. Let's <laughs> go back upstairs to Bob and FP for the bottom of the ninth. All right. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Ray. And after having Brock hit, they will go with Darren O'Day here. Non-save situation. Orioles are up by four. And another guy who's been pretty solid lately. He's given up one earned run his last 17 games with 23 Ks and three walks. That sidearm guy throws the rising fastball. At least that's what it appears to be. Most sidearm guys, you tell yourself, get the ball up. This guy's ball. Looks like it rises. 87 is the fastball and the slider is 79. Occasional change up at 78. But it's a guy you actually have to zone down even though he throws sidearm. First guy up, Cabrera for the Nets. Well, Kevin Gosman stands to win this game. He got through six, stranded six Washington base runners. And then his offense exploded for him. And the Nats will need one of their biggest ninth innings ever. Now load them up and see what happens. Right at Chris Davis, one out. Wilson Ramos at two for three night. Well, you see the difference, just a one glove mistake right there in the Expo, and Wilson goes the other way into the stands, and that put the Nats ahead. One to nothing. The Orioles answered right back in the top of the third, though, with a Caleb Joseph over on the tight at one. So Wilson Ramos now at 296, hitting nearly 330 his last 26 games. Tapper, Caleb Joseph, two outs. Well, not the worst loss in the world for the Nats. They're still going to be up three games on the Braves, who are facing Felix Hernandez tomorrow night. Yeah, this one got away quick, but the good news is you're you're done with the American League, and you also have the Mets coming into town, so you start to play teams in your division now, and no more interleague play. But the Orioles have been impressive, and I wasn't buying that hole they're not hitting thing. Everybody talking about before the game, you have to go by what your eyes tell you, and what I've seen with the Orioles, they can hit and they can score lots of runs in a hurry. Danny Espinosa will hit for Jerry Blevins. And that fastball just fading a little bit outside. Orioles trying to go to Toronto with a four game lead. Nats will have a three, as FP said, when they take the field against the Mets tomorrow night.
30 year old right hander Darren O'Day. Backdoor breaking ball comes around for a strike. So this year, unless the Nats pull off a miracle here, the O's will win three out of four. And they'll take a 29 21 all time advantage in the Beltway series. Kind of a crazy stretch. The Nats give up 10, then two, then nothing, then nothing. And now tonight's seven. Been a, an action packed homestand here with some varied results. But three games to go after this. 2 2 to Espinosa. And that'll do it. The Orioles win the season series. Good work by the Baltimore bullpen. Nine outs, no hits for the Nats. For FP and Dan, Bob Carpenter. Orioles take it, and it's back to the National League East tomorrow night. Join us on Masson 2. Johnny and Ray will get you going from left field at 6.30 with Nats Extra. This has been a presentation of Masson. And by the way, it'll be Gio Gonzalez and Zach Wheeler tomorrow night. Stay tuned. Nats Extra postgame from the ballpark coming up next. And from the booth high atop Nats Park. So long for just a while.